so just you can uh, uh, refer to this uh, probability fourth aspect and as well as the statistics uh, on ninth session we are going to discuss and uh, what is the topic we are going to discuss friends in the today's session non non suresh non venkata non normal uh, about this non normal distribution. distribution okay so friends here observe that uh, so far we have seen some kind of the normal distribution and uh, uh, there we have seen some kind of the empirical formula some empirical rule we have seen uh, so can someone give the insight of this rule friends by the way you know three uh, standard deviation mean uh, plus three standard deviation plus two standard deviation 99.7% uh, very good or 97.7 two standard and one standard uh three standard here uh, 99.7 95 this is 68. 68. Okay. So this is this, this rule, you know, friends, uh, where you can uh, observe there is one curve and we have seen some kind of the uh, observation of uh, mean and as well as our standard deviation so that we can able to perform some kind of the activities. Uh, there you can observe oh, uh, in this range, uh, mu plus or minus three sigma deviation, see uh, standard deviation will able to get 99.7 percentage of our data lies within that particular uh, region and uh, two standard deviation we can conclude that this uh, 95 percentage and one standard plus or minus one standard deviation is uh, giving 68 percentage okay coming to the probability distributions uh, before uh, the normal distribution we have seen bernoulli binomial and uh, uniform distribution uh, each and every distribution is having some kind of the limitation and there is certain kind of the aspects. But what is the advantage of this normal distribution friends? Can, can someone help me to get the properties or characteristics of the normal distribution? Friends, I strongly recommend uh, the members who are all absent in the earlier session. Uh, just go and uh, uh, see the recording because uh, uh, the, the entire aspect uh, today what we are going to uh, see is uh, revolving around uh, uh, the discussion about normal, Bernoulli, and binomial the, and all these things. Okay. Uh, in that yeah. mean, median and mode are all uh, like almost coincident. coincident. Very good. Mean, median and, and uh, uh, mode are coincide. It has a bell-shaped curve. Uh, bell -shaped and, curve uh, and is. And you have an empirical rule. Very good. Okay. So and, uh, the second uniformly important on important. both sides. Excellent. Bell is giving and... enthusiasm. <laughs> no, he's he's on track, Suresh. I can say because he's on the confidence. Confidence levels are uh, uh, from it seems uh, uh, first week he's very low. Even if I am asking any question, also uh, he's very shy to answer and uh, participate. But from next week onward, suddenly he got into this zoner and uh, he, he's, he never, uh, 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 from that point of time, the curve is like uh, raising curve only. He's a uniform distribution. Huh? <laughs> Very good. Bell shaped and symmetric. And uh, what what we have told Suresh, third point. Uh, yeah. Empirical. Empirical rule. Okay. We can uh, observe the empirical formula or rule. Okay. Good. Now, okay, we are happy with these uh, kind of the aspects, but what uh, what else? What about this uh, non-uniform distribution? Because sometimes, you know, um, the distribution is uh, not non-normal, okay, non-normal distribution. Maybe uh, I, still, I want to get uh, um, the percentage of uh, uh, occupancy of the data uh, within the non-normal distribution also. Because in the normal distribution, uh, we are having all the three possibilities uh, because we can uh, use uh, the mean value, standard deviation and all those kind of things. Definitely, they are uh, giving us a good insight. 
but what what happens if my data is uh, not normal because that is also one of the important point we have to verify because just like that i cannot uh, uh, skip the uh, methodologies i cannot ask also the clients uh, you should give the uh, normal kind of the things okay uh, um, if you are talking about these kind of the aspects friends basically okay so our interest is uh, uh, to study about the non normal distributions also okay so so i am introducing you one more aspect here uh, which is uh, you can pronounce uh, uh, this particular thing uh, let me uh, show you that particular distribution how it look likes but before that i want to give you the uh, definition of that hope uh, at least one or two guys would have heard about this term Chebyshev's theorem. Okay, so Chebyshev's theorem. Whereas in case of the normal distribution, uh, what is the formula we are having? Empirical form. Empirical form. Whereas if you are uh, working with the non-normal distribution, Chebyshev's theorem. Yeah, Chebyshev's theorem. Okay, so uh, Chebyshev's theorem. What it says is. Uh, will show you how to use the mean and standard deviation to find the percentage of total observations that fall within a given interval about the mean. See friends here, we are not uh, uh, playing a different game. Yes, same game. Uh, that means we, we still want to uh, work with our mean and standard deviation. Can someone help me friends why we are giving importance to mean and uh, standard deviation? By the way, Because other than this, we are having range, we are having percentile, we are having some correlation, covariance. But why we are talking about mean and standard deviation only? Any any insight on that? No, we are measuring each one with their uh... that day we have seen now, Venkat. If you remember. Uh, there we have uh, studied even you you only read that thing differences between uh, uh, descriptive statistics and, in, and, uh, and uh, exactly there one important point we have seen uh, what made this mean and standard deviation as strong one one important give point. some insights like uh, uh -huh. okay that is one thing any any other how, how much uh, how much this uh, these differ from the uh, each each uh, variable uh, oh, varies oh. with the mean okay any other just to think through uh, what about the error rate whether the in inferential statistics we are getting the more error or in uh, uh, descriptive we are getting the no, more inference error. only will get error as yes, that Not is the point this. so error rate is friends no error rate actually so there is no possibility of error rate is not possible because in the inferential statistics there are many factors are playing a vital role but whereas at the moment i am talking about my descriptive statistics okay as i am uh, as i am getting the data from uh, uh, average or standard deviation or variance kind of thing there is no chance of uh, uh, getting any erroneous kind of the things error rate is not possible or error rate is very less so the mean and standard deviation whatever we are talking about those particular aspects are not at all uh, uh, giving any error or something like that only they, those kind of aspects are uh, uh, perfect computings and you can uh, believe those mean and as well as the variance and standard deviation that is the reason we are revolving around this mean and standard deviation so as to get the understanding of the appropriate data okay now what exactly this chepshu's theorem because our interest is not to study the complete statistics uh, uh, as that of the bachelor of bachelor students or master students our interest is to uh, grasp the uh, the internals of the machine learning because uh, maybe from january 1st onwards we are going to launch our uh, first uh, machine learning algorithm implementation which is the knn okay so just we are uh, making use of all our knowledge maybe the algorithmic knowledge and our uh, pre-processing knowledge and uh, 
exploratory data analysis, feature engineering, dimensional reduction, stat, probability, all those things. Okay. So we want to make use of that convention. Now have a look on this phrase. What is your observation? Think through and you can leave that uh, empirical rule. Now we are into this uh, Chepshu's theorem. That too, this is a non-normal distribution. Again, we are uh, making use of mu, mu plus k sigma, mu minus k sigma. But we are not sure whether that k equal to 1, k equal to 2 or k equal to 3. And if someone asks you to, to explain or uh, if, if yourself, if you are asking like, you know, uh, what is the difference between empirical and Chepshu's theorem? Empirical, we are having a straight narration of uh, mean plus uh, plus or minus one standard deviation, mere, mean plus or minus two standard deviation, mean plus or minus three standard deviation. Like that, we are having some uh, context. In the same similar lines, friends, though we are not talking about one, two, three standard deviations, but still the formula is uh, alike. You know, we are, we are having some knowledge gain. And if I want to study K plus something, definitely I would be interesting because maybe it is, the additional knowledge may not be similar to this K, but still I, I love to uh, go ahead with this concept. Similarly, we are not uh, uh, denying or we are not uh, forgetting about the empirical rule. We are playing with the, on the same lines, friends, if you observe clearly, there is a mean, and there is a, a negative side of that mean, okay? And there is a positive side of that mean. Up to this, we are uh, very good. Now the formula you can say, at least one minus one by K square of the values lie in the shaded area. What do you mean by shaded area friends here? Okay, this is a positive side from the mean. And this is the uh, negative side from the mean. I don't know the percentage. But uh, to, to give the insight, uh, let us uh, talk about these kind of things, okay? So just I'm giving one example to you friends, okay? So just you can uh, make use of this example so as to compute uh, the percentage. Have a look on this. Observe here, for any number K, that means k greater than one. If my k is greater than one, then one minus one by k square, at least of data values like k standard deviation from the mean. Maybe if I'm giving k value as two, uh, that is two standard deviation. If k value is five, five standard deviation, like that. Because the sense of this uh, thing is, for any number k, that means k uh, is greater than one, assume that. In that case, one minus one by k square I'm taking. Okay, k square, at least of data values like k standard deviation from the mean. Mean remains, however, same. Mean remains, however, same. Now, just I am asking this question, friend, because I, in front of you, uh, just I, I am having the formula, because the formula is like this, 1 minus 1 by k square. Uh, now, uh, can you analyze this uh, statement, friends, what exactly? Within two standard deviations of the mean, and the distribution is not normal. Okay, and the distribution is not normal. And uh, what is the percentage? Okay, and uh, what is the percentage of the observation? Any any point is rising to your mind, friend? Just to think through. And we are confirming that there are two standard deviations of the mean. Within the two standard deviations, uh, I want to get the distribution of the data, which is uh, again we are emphasizing that my data is not normal. Suppose. If I am asking you guys the same two standard deviation, like mu plus or minus two standard deviation, uh, what is the percentage of the data spread, friends? Percentage of the data spread? 95. Very good. Okay. Do I need any computing, friends, in case of the normal? No. Okay. Because no. that is a standard uh, thing. Like, you know, uh, you can. You can straight away uh, give the narration, okay? As this is a normal distribution, uh, we are having the consolidation of uh, 
plus or minus one, two, three. So as I am asking you two standard deviation from the mean, obviously you can uh, say 95 percentage of my data is uh, uh, distributed. Uh, uh, this percentage of 95 percentage of the data distribution. As I am saying two standard deviation, but there is a constraint here. Our uh, distribution is not normal, but we are uh, having this uh, two standard deviations in our hand and the formula also we are having. Then what is your, uh, how can you refer that friends? Okay, K I can say as a standard deviation or not. One minus one by K square means what friends here? Four. That means uh, four. You can say standard deviation or the coefficient of standard deviation. That k is nothing but reference of the standard deviation because you know here reference of the, whether it is a ah, one standard two, deviation, ah, two standard exactly. deviation, standard correct, deviation. correct, correct. See here, you can say at least one by uh, at least one minus one by k square of the values lie in the shaded area. What, what we are referring here, friends, k means here along with the standard deviation, we are referencing the coefficient. Maybe this k decides how many standard deviations. Okay, now here if I am submitting uh, that one by one minus uh, uh, two square kind of thing, uh, what is the value friends here? Three by two. Hmm. How can you refer this? Three by two, how much? Zero point? One point five. Four minus one, uh, three by two. Three by four. Oh, no. Four minus, uh, yeah, three by four. Three actually. by four. Yeah, so three by four. Uh, three by four because square, na, this one, yeah. Good. Now, now you tell me, friends, what is that? Uh, three by four means zero point uh, six. Six or seven. 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 Point seven. Seven. That means 75 percentage of our data lies in the uh, two standard deviation. Oh. Okay, no? it is 95 percent there, it is 75 percent ah, because that is a non normal distribution. Okay, now uh, I am asking you this question, friends. Okay, so uh, just I am uh, making use of a little twist. Maybe Lakshmi can do this uh, along with Suresh and Venkat, whoever are in the call. Uh, just you can refer this point and uh, give me the answer, friends, which is very much interested. Of course, uh, uh, the confirmation is non-normal distribution, definitely. And my mu value is here uh, 39. My standard deviation is 5. Now I want to get, okay, uh, the find the percentage of values that lie within 29 and 49 from the mean. A little trick is there, friends. We are 1 minus 1 by k square formula with us. And uh, apart from that, my mean uh, mu value is uh, 39, standard deviation is 5. And I want to get the percentage of values that lie within 29 and 49 from the mean. So that means mu plus. Within 29 and 49 friends. So my mu plus k sigma, how much friends here? Three mu plus k sigma, can I take as 49 plus k sigma? Because maximum range is how much? 49, because our interest is this one. Now I need to compute the k value. Simply you substitute. What is the mu value friends here? 39. Uh, my interest is to compute the k sigma which is 49. Now you tell me friends what is the k sigma value here? And k sigma equal to 10 because 49 minus 39. Uh, and now sigma is 5. Sigma is uh, no how can I say that? Because standard deviation he has already given. Ah, yeah. Standard deviation is 5, na? so k5. 5k equal to 10. K value is 2. K equal to 2. Yes. 
Now, K value to somewhere we have seen, just you observe. <laughs> 75%. Yes. Okay. That's all. Don't, don't get confused friend, because stat or probability are not that much uh, difficult. Okay. But uh, see all our computer science people and uh, we are entering to their zone. Na? Definitely they have put some stop. Uh, I, I'm not blaming them, but uh, they should show their uh, importance also na, in the team. So definitely we will respect and we'll give the importance, no doubt about that. But only the thing is don't feel that uh, we cannot enter into their uh, zone, uh, never friends. Okay. Maybe they're having official degree in PA in stat or something like that, but still you can also have the, uh, not that much competence uh, with uh, stat guys, but definitely uh, we can also uh, play around uh, uh, these kind of the aspects. Okay, so uh, if you are referencing uh, in case of the normal and non-normal, um, how much amount of the data? Can someone help me friends? Okay, uh, what is the use of uh, making use of these conventions by the way? Uh, what is the use of getting the percentage of uh, data lies within this or uh, what is your thought process in that? How, how, can, how can you justify? Suppose if someone is asking you, uh, maybe uh, normal or non-normal distribution, in normal, you can bank on the empirical rule and in non-normal, you can go with the exception. That, that data actually, that percentage uh, between the second standard deviation or the third standard deviation, whatever data you're taking, hmm. that is a data where you, uh, you know, it, it uh, without any problem you can do with the model you know test with the model mm -hmm. so you mean to say that um, is a is a iceberg na? like uh, uh, is, a, is a iceberg kind of thing or what is what is your i need that uh, what, what do you mean by iceberg what what exactly you are referring to iceberg hey man come on <laughs> anger, anger, <what? laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that. Actually, uh, what like, my this thing is, uh, uh, this these values uh, can be a predicted values which can be used in the model. Uh, I think it's uh, two things. One is uh, the accuracy of the data, and uh, is a uh, number. Uh, how much uh, how accuracy much will be more? Data are we going to take? Hmm. Okay. Suresh, you need to add one more. Venkat has done. Lakshmi or Yogesh, whoever. Because accuracy, of course, because we are banking on uh, a meaningful data. So whatever we are talking about. And uh, apart from that, amount of the data is important. When iceberg is simple. Uh, we are traveling in a particular sea or something like that. Maybe the tip of this thing. This is uh, some kind of tip is there. Na? The, so due to this particular iceberg only that uh, Titanic has uh, crashed. Na? So <clears throat> iceberg is a tip, uh, is, a, is a whole some, uh, some kind of from that particular point of view, you can get the um, aggregation of the data. Iceberg queries are there. Uh, Suresh, you are uh, a SQL guy and you are very... Uh, <laughs> 75% of the data means out of 1000, uh, suppose we have 1000 uh, lines or 1000 uh, variables, mm. I'm like going to take uh, 75, 750. So I'll be working on uh, those 750, which are lying in that uh, range. Good, good. good. Okay. Is, that, is, is that correct? Uh, what, uh, yeah, yeah, correct. Vanguard. Because, you know, all we are trying to get is the span of the data, na? spread of the data. Because though we are using mm. mean and as well as the standard deviation, uh, no matter whether we are working with the uh, normal distribution or not normal distribution kind of things, uh, but still we are playing around the percentage of the data. So how the data is spread over and how much data is uh, span. Okay, because uh, uh, one thing, one thing, let me give you the clarity. Suppose if K value equal to one, suppose one minus one by one, hmm. what is the value friends? Zero. Zero. Okay, because uh, see, uh, if I'm making use my standard deviation as one, I can say no records were there. Whereas if it is two, one minus one by two, uh, some point I got actually one by two, 50 percentage of the data. Okay, likewise, I can uh, uh, observe whether that is k equal to two or three uh, in case of uh, 
uh, non normal or normal i can figure out how much amount of the data is spread over to these standard deviations okay again you know so because uh, we we know that uh, what is the mu value and what is the standard deviation value along with the percentage of the data so we can fairly implement our model and we can play with our uh, model so that is the observation where you can uh, refer uh, related to uh, the understanding of uh, the distribution of the data okay so uh, can someone quickly summarize uh, all the four uh, probability distribution friends so that we can jump into the most important aspect uh, sampling methods yeah. we have two one is bernoulli's and uh, mm. the, uh, binomial okay binomial. Ah. next is binomial next one is uh, uniform normal distribution ah. uniform and normal normal and non normal uh, binomial no, normal. Uh, mm, yeah upper, one point to you friends can i say bernoulli binomial uniform as non normal yes yes because other than this normal we can say those are all the non normal <laughs> because let's see we are having classification and regression non regression means that is uh, obviously only two categories are there now i can say that is a classification kind of thing similarly bernoulli binomial uniform are there and uh, they are having their own um, uh, formulas friends actually if you observe bernoulli what is the observation we have seen only it is single, a single take single, single take or single trial right. and and we will be getting uh, success uh, failure or success kind zero of. or one zero or one what about the binomial friends binomial is a series of uh, bernoulli very good series of bernoullis series of trials except that all are remain same what is our uniform distribution equal uh, equal um, equally normal. likely so equally likely kind of events and there you can uh, observe uh, the possibilities of uh, uniform distribution sometimes you know the head and tails all those kind of aspects what is the specialty with your normal distribution it has all all three coincident uh, don't say uh, don't say empirical rule friend empirical rule is based on the normal distribution Uh, your empirical rule is not guiding the normal distribution based on the properties of the normal distribution some statistician has uh, uh, introduced the empirical rule okay so first uh, derived have... empirical rule from this actually. exactly exactly okay uh, we should uh, not go on the other side actually empirical rule though you are uh, uh, getting uh, uh, empirical rule into into your mind but you still uh, stick on to this uh, mean Uh, median, median mode. and mode coincidence and bell bell shaped curve and all bell shaped the... curve and signal uh, symmetry asymmetry yeah these things and as a next step you can say your uh, 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 empirical rule okay so because uh, as based on the mean median and mode uh, this empirical rule allows that okay so the numbers are also important friends what is the which are all the numbers ninety nine point seven ninety five Sixty-eight rule, okay. Three sigma rule, or this particular ninety-nine point seven, ninety-five, and sixty-eight percentage rule. Like that, uh, they have derived all these kind of the aspects. Okay. Now, uh, ah, they have cut. The binomial uh, distribution and all they follow the time series. Correct. The calculation, uh, calculation of the formula. What we have seen, n factorial uh, by n ah. minus. Factorial and the expect these are all like time uh, time series the way we derive the formulas correct uh, yeah uh, what is that actually binomial na let me pull binomial. that no problem we can pull na binomial what is the formula Excuse no we form. have uh, uh, in school we have done this limit and uh, continuity limits. <laughs> uh, okay this one actually n factorial by n minus x factorial into x factorial and there we have observed one point venkat uh, can you can you uh, throw some uh, point on these things exactly we mapped this particular computing we have done some example also we have taken some example also and uh, tails and uh, ah. like number of heads number exactly. of heads mm. the occurrence of number of uh, 
number of heads and then uh, we have uh, substituted like if we are getting uh, uh, two heads ah zero so, heads one head and two head whichever yeah, the normal probability we are having the same probability we could able to observe with the binomial yeah. okay. binomial is nothing but normal probability actually normal probability with the uh, series of because you know normal probability in the sense friends uh, however we are having the success or failure okay and, and the derivation uh, goes in the same way no same way actually okay and one more important thing uh, series of uh, bernoulli na no? series of bernoulli no, it is the series of bernoulli uh, yeah. multiple yeah. times multiple times multiple times of the trials trials okay so that makes actually uh, see one simple additional property converts the entire bernoulli to the binomial and that too which is equivalent to the normal probability so that uh, at least we can say uh, whatever the points we have observed in the normal probability on the trial basis zero heads one head and two heads the same thing we can uh, uh, proportionate with the uh, probability uh, values of this binomial okay so that uh, that point you 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 can refer in in a fair uh, specification because even though, though we have substituted all these kind of the points uh, we could able to get the narration of those things okay and uh, if i am talking uh, like uh, what is the mean of the probability friends actually something we have seen well, it's a uh, one uh, p only uh. Ah uh, yeah, cumulative probability, na that one uh, cumulative probability and variance is nothing but uh, that accordingly we have to vary it. But in case of the distributions, okay, we are having uh, a separate uh, zoner for the mean and uh, variance. Can we really can we really perform any operation on probability to get the mean or variance, friends? Have you seen anything like that? no we have not interested on that okay but why we have seen uh, those mean and uh, variance in the distributions by the way we we get the derived values uh, uh -huh. you know, the proper values from the mean and uh, standard deviations and one more thing we are talking about the distribution because distribution if i am talking how my variable is behaving how my data is spread over and mm -hmm. uh, how i can get the insights of that particular data entire things coming into the picture and uh, if you are if you are making use of this distribution of the data definitely if i am taking the mean value and standard deviation uh, can i get any additional advantage friends is there any possibility of getting additional advantage Additional advantage is some more uh, information because mean does not take any unwanted data, like, you know. Exactly, because it it is not going to uh, portray any errors. It is a mm. it is a straight kind of the point. And it's a straight to, kind of uh, thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, on standard deviation is based on that. So yes, exactly. You get a, a proper <laughs> proper data. proper understanding of the distribution of the data. That is all we are trying. Na? Uh, what we are trying is uh, to so as to observe. so as to get the pulse of that particular data set so that our uh, we are striving for getting the most advantage from the data set okay uh, this is how you can refer okay up to some time okay just time i don't want to pull again uh, the z test t test <laughs> case where they are all uh, typical stat orientation friends and uh, now i am going to introduce one uh, simple aspect but important uh, sampling methods what do you mean by sampling method friends first of all sampling leave it what do you mean by a sample you get uh, take take some amount of you know some proper number of a data oh. uh, for for uh, for a testing okay like like uh, uh, like how do you say that like you know um mm, the variable what variable you said um, agree small part of a probability okay that's all uh, maybe you are not getting I'm, population i'm talking about actually in a this one sample only. data Subset, i'm taking exactly okay whatever the data you are taking friends and fetching some portion of the data na 
some portion of the data in the main main in the main stream. from the main data from the main data you are getting the portion of the data in a, in a statistical terminology in a proper uh, definition subset or small parts of the population what do you mean by population by the way is a whole area uh, entire data entire data entire data now this is a sample friends not a sampling our interest is on the sampling methods okay sample you know which is a subset or small part of the population what do you mean by sampling friends by the way sampling is a statistical procedure that is concerned with the selection of individual observation in the sample okay so again i am revisiting sampling is a statistical procedure that is concerned with the selection of individual observations in the sample is a process basically and which is used to select some kind of the observations now suresh may ask this why we are not using population because i am implementing the machine learning algorithms i am interested to uh, uh, get the data and to uh, to submit the data to the methodology of the uh, corresponding algorithm now why population is not used reference in the uh, why we are going with the sampling rather than going with the entire population any any uh, applying a statistical you know your probability on sampling hmm. will give you a result where that will be proceeded to the whole uh, ex, uh, the whole because this portion is the the, the subset is a sample so when okay. you are applying your uh, probability on the subset and that will be carried over to the whole data yeah uh, that is our uh, end end point na actually so what yeah, what suresh point. is saying is uh, uh, though we are not taking the population but still uh, with the help of the sample we could able to uh, contextualize the entire population behavior okay that means suppose population is having some kind of the behavior rather than taking the entire data uh, the same thing if i could achieve with the sample then why we need to take the population so that is his uh, uh, debate uh, of course so i suppose, agree suppose if i apply normal distribution on your sample ha huh. and if the normal distribution values are really good coming in in, in 95% then mm. i should say that okay my 2d i'll apply it and i can put it on the whole population that's all because uh, see the point here is population is a huge data friends entire data and uh, subset of the data is nothing but the sample but what is the uh, what is the precaution you have to take in the generation of the sampling friends one simple precaution we have to take what is that yes uh, okay yes, that that what is that suresh can you come again um, uh, venkat outliers uh outliers uh, outliers can can we really uh, process uh, outliers they, here outliers no. already you are using mean here Mm. and standard deviation the outliers will be it's example i think i did not get the question again. yeah outliers yeah. is gone mean is gone mean is ah. gone totally your normal distribution <laughs> is go to dogs yeah oh, no i am you are selecting the sample ah okay no a selection of the sample comes under the category of the data pre processing no na no because all you have done your uh, data pre processing you are in the stage of submitting your job to the model okay okay, okay. Uh, can can you uh, name what is the steps in the uh, data science uh, project friends no we need to select the correct algorithm now ah yeah yeah see first point this one ah uh, what is the second one friends actually after exploratory data analysis you have to perform the data pre processing you have to collect data you have to storage data process ah, data all the things and third data point and is dimension analysis dimension dimensionality reduction ah what is the fourth one friends feature engineering feature like that it goes on as our yogesh is saying data analysis okay actually exploratory data analysis here we are doing maybe you can apply your uh, 
descriptive statistics or else maybe you are applying your visualization all these things friends can someone help me to uh, get into the data pre processing which are all the uh, procedures we are following maybe one or two because you, you should per mm. what is that encoding and coding oh very good missing value missing imputing values. imputing and uh, encoding all these things comes under the care and uh, one more thing we have seen standardization normalization ah normalization friends i don't know whether you are going to enjoy this new year or you are going to <laughs> prepare this uh, uh, <laughs> whatever the models because they damn sure from <laughs> january onwards we are going to talk uh, algorithms only okay if you <laughs> if your uh, uh, stat discussion and if your uh, uh, knowledge of the algorithms if you could not pull at that moment of time again we have to go back and refer all these things okay only well, the thing is just you think through friends we have uh, uh, come come across with 30 hours of the sessions we left over with uh, 20 hours of the sessions definitely from uh, 10 to uh, 15 hours uh, we are going to spend in the uh, ml or data science zoner and these 5 hours i am reserving for uh, our simple project and as well as some kind of the case studies or else uh, you know best practices and sometimes you know i may ask you i may give you some kind of the spark or uh, um some additional python stuff along with the interview preparation okay so those five hours uh, or uh, those five sessions are reserved sessions okay best practices spark python interview questions all these things okay but these 10 to 15 hours definitely again we are going to uh, pull all these uh, 30 hours topics okay so reason behind this is uh, uh, to be frank to be frank your uh, implementation hardly takes uh, half an hour to one hour in the session but uh, the supporting uh, whichever the aspect suppose if i am talking about the knn ah uh, what is the stat behind this knn can someone help me distance calculation okay if i am talking about the naive bias naive bias is on uh, the probability <laughs> favorite <laughs> venkat's favorite algorithm huh? he, he is immediately <laughs> responding he is not even giving no, time also no doubt no doubt suresh about to tell about three robo venkat robo when you say naive bias is jumping into that no no i don't skill. know see this is the, the person this is the fifth or sixth time he never give wrong answer if naive bias is coming huh? that <laughs> okay he is like... jumping and killing he is a tiger here naive bias that is that is his boundary compared to knn or svm we have lot of lot of things that confusing naive bias is simply probable <laughs> simply probable <laughs> probability and uh, following base theorem <laughs> ah that's it very good very good okay so uh, base theorem and one more thing venkat uh, here uh, apart from the base theorem we are having one more thing na uh, uh, one more uh, conditional Hello. probability all the condition conditional Con probability every we consider all the features uh, these th ah that is all the weak learners Oh, okay, weak learners. We are going to consider nice case studies. We are having. We'll see. This is the naive bias. And uh, if I am saying the third algorithm as uh, support vector machine, we measure the margin or the maximize the margin. Ah, uh, maximize the margins. Maximize the margins. And uh, there is one more aspect. Uh, if you remember, uh, what is that aspect, friends? kernel some kernel trick what is the kernel trick friends suppose if i am having the non linear data and i want to convert this non linear into linear data there are we are having some kernel tricks uh maybe i am having the sigmoid function or some kind of the polynomial function okay like that we are having some uh, uh 
radial basis function which is very important okay all these are helpful in the understanding of the support vector machine now if i am saying um uh, decision trees decision trees friends uh, anyhow in the tomorrow session i am going to introduce the concept of the chi square okay directly we are having the implication of this chi square in the decision trees actually so basically just we are following the entropy a nice uh, observation is there friends which is very very um, uh, significant okay so chi square entropy uh, in the decision tree again we are going back and uh, verifying some kind of the uh, usage okay so chi square kind of the things now if i am saying this uh, a random forest hmm. what it refers friends it is a collection of decision trees collection of or integration of decision trees and this is nothing but uh, what 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 is the methodology we can say friend there ensemble learning we uh, divide and conquer ah uh, here only we can say divide and conquer yes. and uh, apart from this thing random forest uh, there is a concept called ensemble learning okay just integration of all the individual aspects and so that we can uh, have a look of uh, all these uh, uh, things okay and uh, once this thing is over uh, what is the next thing friends we have seen artificial neural networks uh, what is the methodology we have followed there an and the forward and uh, backward uh, forward yeah, propagation and uh, backward okay feed forward and yeah. backward prop propagation so what is the use of backward propagation friends can someone help me it learns by itself so that, uh, that, that yeah that, suppose that. i am having the input layer with me and there are some hidden layers and we are having the output layer so if this output whatever the output we got may not be reaching to our expectation or our the original data again we are getting this output to the previous i mean whatever the hidden layers were having and input layers and along with the input we are having this weights also w1 w2 w3 likewise okay so the combination of the inputs and weights can be given to the hidden layer and those things are feed forwarded and if the output is not uh happy and we are not happy with the output whatever we are having then we are going back and uh, connect with the changing hidden the, changing the weights we changing are the weights that's it that's it that's it that is what you call the artificial neural networks and uh, if you are uh, talking about the nlp kind of techniques oh, that is purely english <laughs> purely english this ma a guy should come ma, MA electric guys am phil guys the mphil guys should come not phd also because those mphil guys are distinct with phds okay so nlp is a technique where you can uh, observe the lemmatization some kind of the pruning techniques okay based on the uh, those kind the of words aspects and, uh, the words mm, words disambiguity and corpus of the words okay sentiment analysis all those things are uh, related to this uh, nlp kind of the techniques and if i am talking about the clustering friends hmm, what do you mean by this actually unsupervised learning uh, definitely it is a unsupervised learning very good the patterns in the data which is where we are interested in the patterns not the predictions or something okay so uh, hidden insights or patterns or patterns all these things can be observed with the clustering mechanism okay we don't want to highlight the predictions or something okay the way of uh, implementing the clustering is completely different okay here also just we are uh, making use of that uh, distances and grouping all the similar kind of the aspects that is comes under the category of the clustering and now if i am introducing you this uh, aspect uh, what is this mba patients we talk about association uh, ah with... excellent this is nothing but the market basket analysis okay friends market basket analysis if you observe this uh, mba as our friend told these are all completely playing around the association rules ah 
can you give some example friends uh, that day we have seen some example but uh, some retail examples if somebody is buying one kind of uh, stuff Product? like coffee, yeah then we can uh, interlink uh, with this similarity like like suppose they are buying milk uh, uh, in a uh, supermarket in the shop hmm. supermarket so then they are buying milk they are buying other things so how they are uh, okay. how many times and how in what way yeah, they are yeah. buying correct uh, how many people are behind that we are, this we particular are uh, item set item set is nothing but uh, suppose if you are uh, purchasing some milk okay uh, along with milk uh, uh, how many times the other products are also purchased other products of their purchasing those things we can say as a association rule mining or market basket analysis and uh, one more important thing is if you say um, this tenth one is um, we have seen that uh, dimensional reduction actually what do you mean by this friends dimensional reduction the dimensional reduction is nothing but uh, uh, in the given data set we are having plenty of the uh, suppose in the today's interview i asked one question friends actually like uh, 250 uh, features are there and uh, uh, that guy said okay uh, how many features are there in the current data set i asked He's a senior member. He told that okay, fifty features are there, Uma, like that. Now whether uh, the, the source itself is having fifty or uh, what I have asked. He said that okay, uh, two fifty is having. Uh, maybe I got some chat. Not no, audible. No, you are audible. You are audible. Yes. Who is that? Okay, check your. Uh, yeah, yeah. Check your. Uh, yeah. Now hope I am. It's audible. Uh, Venkat. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> I asked him like uh, uh, 50 features are there uh, while, while starting your modeling and uh, while you are fetching your data, uh, do they uh, have the same kind of the 50? <laughs> Yogesh, maybe he's uh, having some issue with uh, audio. Okay, no problem. So uh, then he said uh, uh, 250 initially we are having. Now, now we got uh, uh, additional 50, uh, I mean, uh, we reduced that particular to reduce that to 50. Ah. Then I sim simple question. Uh, so uh, what is the basis for that? What is the basis for simple friends here? See if Yogesh is uh, uh, feeling that 250 features are more, he cannot uh, uh, <laughs> randomly select uh, uh, his uh, uh, numbers like uh, six is his lucky number he cannot check 6 12 18 uh, like that he cannot select because there is a setup actually in the data science we cannot uh, uh, travel uh, in the single handed direction maybe we are having in a team uh, you know uh, data scientist three and uh, if you observe the statistician at least one and subject matter expert, uh, maybe the domain expert, I can say, uh, this is one guy. And we'll be having some support team, like maybe Python or uh, Scala. Uh, majority of the time, these, is, yeah, these, these guys may be two. So uh, see, in the, the data science owner, uh, Yogesh, uh, Suresh, and Venkat are there. Maybe in the domain expert Lakshmi is there is doing that. So now if you if you refer uh, this Python guys Naveen, maybe Shiva might be there. Okay, in the Python or Scala orientation. So uh, see uh, Suresh or uh, Yogesh got the uh, insight of okay why I need to go with these two fifty features. Uh, simply I can uh, fetch this particular uh, how many no, maybe I want to reduce that. Definitely, these 250 features are not going to act equally in the model. Okay, for that purpose, I asked, uh, what is the process you followed? Maybe not exactly the data pre-processing technique. What, in what way uh, the discussion happens in your team, like that I asked. Okay, so uh, simple friends here, uh, uh, daily, uh, whatever the programming we are having as that of the Java or Python, we won't do those uh, uh, typical functionalities in the machine learning or data science projects because you know the same code or the same implementation 
uh, weeks together, uh, we, we have to work friends because many things would be there. If you are uh, changing one, if you are removing one feature and if you want to run your uh, code, um, and then you have to come across with many steps actually. So why we have why you have uh, uh, removed that and what is the reason? And one more important thing, uh, suppose uh, uh, there are uh, stand-up calls actually. So this particular stand-up call basically revolving around the optimizations. Optimizations or uh, predict, predictions of the corresponding models and all these kind of things, okay? Suppose uh, you left with uh, uh, 30 days release and you have done everything. But client suddenly came into picture and he asked that uh, client member representative our POC. So just he put a query like, uh, why you have not considered that feature or we, we badly need that feature in the uh, business. Almost uh, you worked uh, around uh, six months of the corresponding projects. And uh, if you are not having your uh, standups or uh, weekly interactions, and it is uh, reached to 30 days of the release. But again, uh, this guy is asking us to put back that uh, feature. Now you need to revamp everything, friends. It won't happen. Practically, you know, see, if you want to uh, remove any of the feature, then so many discussions should have should happen. Okay, because just like that, you if you if you are not interested to put a variable in your program, you can simply remove and you can have your own strategy. But at the moment we are talking about the machine learning or data science kind of the journal uh, to remove or to take the decision of this dimensional reduction. So many iterations should be there, maybe with the subject matter experts and uh, uh, with the uh, statisticians. And uh, see, can, can someone help me friends if I want to remove uh, a particular feature as of now we are having some procedure because I have not uh, 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 we have not uh, uh, gone through the principal component analysis, all those things. With the current knowledge, whatever we are having, what is the process of removing the feature? Uh, no, we discussed about uh, eye correlation. Uh, ah, very good. Excellent. High correlation filter. Oh. And Low variance filter. No variance filter. Ah. And nothing uh, earlier also. This, so the, the missing values, if uh, they, we have some missing values up to some 5%, I think we can. Uh, missing value filter. filter. Greater than 30%. Oh, okay. Greater than 30%. See, but the entire uh, feature itself is uh, uh, projecting null values. Okay. Greater than 30%, we are having the null values. See, see friends, that is how you need to connect the dots. Always you need not be expert in principal component analysis or advanced algorithms. We, with the uh, stats or with the knowledge what we're having uh, so far, definitely helps you to think through uh, these kind of the challenges. Maybe uh, in your entire lifetime journey of your data science uh, or machine learning, you may not get a chance of removing a feature, but after one year or after two years, suddenly if there is a observation, anyhow, uh, you have to observe uh, maybe 15 or 20 features where you may be having in your data set, input data set, but out of curiosity, you want to check uh, the uh, understanding of those particular features. Uh, definitely you should uh, 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 consider these uh, high correlation or low variance or missing value filter. So that spark must be there guys. Okay. So you need not, uh, uh, someone, someone asked me <laughs> like in the, earlier sessions, uh, uh, after uh, seeing all these things, it's like supermarket because we have uh, thought uh, uh, starting from the machine learning algorithms and then we have seen NLP techniques, artificial intelligence, uh, artificial neural network and uh, uh, these stats, probabilities uh, like a supermarket kind of thing. Then answer is very simple. While learning the driving, uh, you know, you should be very cautious and you should uh, place your hands uh, on the steering and uh, everything, uh, you clutch maintenance and brake, everything come into the picture. Once you are familiar and you got the expertise, just with uh, uh, just with the single hand also, just by making your phone calls and all, you can uh, make use of that uh, driving. Okay, simply 
any technology friends uh, may not be driving or something any technology after uh, having the expertise and command definitely you can uh, uh, have the hold off okay are referring those particular point back because experience is uh, most important okay just what whatever the aspects we are facing and how we are uh, pulling these kind of things uh, into the picture that is the most important thing okay now uh, actually i i want to uh, give some insight of uh, uh, the sampling methods and uh, these particular sampling methods as we discussed you know population always not feasible friends we cannot always bank on the entire population due to various reasons we cannot accommodate the entire data we cannot handle the entire uh, uh, population to be fixed into our uh, limitations of the space and as well as the time constraints okay so sampling is mandatory however so now uh, why we need to uh, use the sampling rather than the population so it's not a feasible kind of the solution and more efforts time and money and resources can be required so as to uh, make use of the population and uh, if you are referencing the population the entire population if i am giving also i am not sure whether uh, uh, <laughs> the, the population is complete data or uh, still i need to integrate some more data okay now as our friend one more uh, important point he has uh, referred what should be the main characteristic or main requirement of the sampling friends what is the main requirement we are going to uh, have in the sampling okay we decided that uh, rather than going with the population we are happy to have the sampling method that is perfectly fine now uh, in what way we are uh, making use of this particular sampling method what is the outcome of this particular sampling method what we need to expect basically Yeah, it should contain. Uh, it should represent uh, the complete uh, data. Very part. good, excellent. Okay, so whatever the aspects we are uh, making use. Now you see, friends here. Just if you observe, because why I am getting this particular statement is uh, generally okay. As a, if you are attending any data science kind of interview, definitely they ask these kind of things. Friends. Okay, so you should be very clear about uh, what exactly the sample. should be a good estimator good estimator of the population what do you mean by estimation friends that is sample should possess or exhibit all of your population characteristics now you see uh, suppose if someone is asking you maybe kumar or rani how is uh, dr roma uh, teaching whether he really teaching well or not so maybe uh, he is uh, they are talking about venkat or suresh Are you guess somebody? And if you are uh, if you are asked to explain something, okay. So if you are reflecting the point, okay. Consider this: Dr. Roma is the source, and uh, Venkat, all these members are the samples. So if uh, these guys can exhibit or can possess the topics which I have dealt in the sessions, then definitely a uh, uh, Kumar or Rani would be happy. because okay this guy is teaching well so that we can uh, uh, have a uh, nice uh, observations at all so that we can place uh, our students in good company so that we can get good reputation like that so simple simple aspect is uh, while talking about the sampling kind of the aspect <clears throat> that should be an estimator friends what do you mean by estimator estimator is something like which we are using as a kind of the tool so as to portray it suppose if you are uh, not taking the population then we should be very cautious in the maintenance of this particular sample that's what we are saying the sample should possess or exhibit all of your population characteristics why why we need to do that friends why again i am asking what is the reason behind that why we need to refer all the characteristics or possibilities no otherwise we will not get the result that uh, that, that is uh, the, the prediction will not be like accurate uh, simple see if I, if i am not getting the exact characteristics or exact behavior okay then how do i expect 
the proper uh, understanding of the data and proper prediction of the data okay this is an obvious statement friends okay why we need to reflect the population in the sample is very simple formula or simple thing uh, based on the convention okay whatever the methodology we are following whatever the sampling methods we are following our interest is to preview to preview the population and that particular preview should be in a position to uh, reflect the characteristics of the population okay that is fine now how many sampling methods we are having so the more many are there friends but i am i want to refer these things and uh, out of these three also 99.5 percentage we are uh, banking on this random sampling can someone refer this point friends somewhere we have seen long back uh strain x test y test y train ah okay here uh, we are having one uh, random sample okay this particular random sample what it does friend just we are giving the x y values to this particular split input split and we are mentioning the random sample okay the the type of sampling we are using the random sample so here what we are expecting is whatever the data i am having okay so this particular x and y ah uh, y value is nothing but what is the name given to y in machine learning context friends label label very good what is the x value feature x is the feature what is the other name for y y uh, y predict y test dependent uh, variable dependent, dependent variable this and is nothing but the uh, just to observe here friend these these technologies are very important at the moment you are joining with your uh, team <laughs> and if you are saying my independent variable and dependent variable you will be caught okay so that is what so random sampling is a most 99.5 percentage of the cases we are uh, making use of the random sampling okay can someone uh, give an insight maybe i am not uh, even i am not pasting what exactly the definition can you talk something friends what do you mean by random sampling no picking uh, picking uh, without uh, like pre screening just out of a population we like uh, suppose there are 100 people we just pick 10 or 15 for test that's it randomly chosen sample randomly chosen sample so that means we are not following any uh, sequential patterns or uh, uniform behavior of the selections you know long back we have seen this uh, example also friends if you remember our company uh, want to study about uh, how us uk uh, uh, countries are following the uh, high core appraisal system and uh, there we observed many countries uh, uh, you were see your uh, boss asked you to study about the appraisal systems but you you have not covered the uk uh, payout system but you have come up with only us okay you have not followed the randomization there you are followed the specification specifically you are uh, you have taken that us based data and we are uh, happy with that data but at the moment you if you give the uk data Uh, what is the problem friends here we will we will be getting there is one name we have under. seen uh yeah. overfitting or underfitting uh, overfitting because overfitting. It, it does because your model never faced this uk data uh, yeah you know never faced that uk ah uh, obviously by hearted that us data and if you are giving us data it is very happy 95 96 like that it is giving but suddenly if you are changing the uk data your model is annoyed and uh, obviously it is dropping to 75 or 76 percentage of the prediction that is what you call the overfitting of the data okay so while selecting this particular random kind of things you can uh, make use of the random sampling what is the advantage friends because very simple topic what is the advantage of random sampling we can uh, we can just pick the data and we can test uh, no easy to easy to conduct 
okay that uh, very easy to uh, handle that particular thing let me uh, give the convention of that okay so just if you are referencing your uh, uh, advantage of this particular sampling so just you can see here high probability of achieving a representative sample uh, representative sample for what for population population okay for population entire population what is the second important thing friends as our friend told easy to conduct and third thing what do you what do you mean by this third point can can someone help me to understand that point friends meets assumptions of many procedures what do you mean by this assumptions of many procedures that means uh, maybe you have collected your data from different countries and uh, you may follow different categories or different approaches so as to collect the data but still as we are following the random nature definitely we can cover all the possibilities so all the assumptions or uh, whichever the procedures we have followed the same conventions can be observed in this case okay and on the other side also you have to see you know, what is the problem friends what is the issue or what is the disadvantage the features what is it okay the, all the features maybe the features i think yeah sometimes we may miss some of the we may not get the consistent values okay this is one thing maybe uh, if the, we, we may be lagging in some of the you know the values will be missing some of the missing values will be there. exactly see that that thing if you are keep the sample size is playing a vital role now here suppose we are having 1 lakh records your sampling is only 10 percentage and if you are seeing only 2 percentage then definitely uh, this sample size is having uh, uh, issue if sample size is more what is, what is the problem friends if sample size is more then what is the problem yeah, problem <laughs> problem in the sense one lakh records are there you are taking 90 percentage of your data then really it is can we call that as a I sample or no because we want to less the efforts we want to make use of the space so if you are putting more sample there is a problem because it is uh, fetching all the data on the other side if you are keeping only two percent sample you may not cover the entire thing so that is what friend you should be very cautious in the maintenance of the sample size and second important thing is uh, we may not get sometimes you know we may not get the consistent results also okay this is how you can uh, refer the random sample what is the second category friends here what is the second category stratified by chance uh, have you heard about the term strata or stratified it is like a distinguishing kind of thing or uh, organized something like you grouping strata is nothing but a grouping so uh, this kind of the sampling you know we are having some kind of the population uh, which is which is partitioned into non overlapping groups okay you know the non overlapping groups can be known as a strata or stratified and uh, uh, which is a, a sample is selected by design which is uh, nothing but the stratum now if i am uh, giving you this uh, kind of the diagram friends have a look on this you need to comment on this actually have a look friends here Uma, your vaccination is a stratified sampling, no? What is that, Suresh? Vaccination, what you're giving, you're grouping into ages. Vaccination, maybe, yeah, uh, 12 to 8. Because they are, if, <clears throat> if you take group in a groups of, from this age to this age, this age uh, to this age, you uh, take a samples and you see that whether they are vaccinated or not. Mm. Over, not over, non overlapping no? that is non overlapping definitely that is a stratified it is not a random you are correct Suresh mm. correct. and one more thing can you give other than that that is the best example of course any other example
suppose i am having some uh, uh, study uh, like some countries uh, uh, whatever the uh, tax system okay so in us what is the tax system and in uk what is the tax system and in india what is the tax system okay so if i want to study about uh, uh, maybe in some cases you know friends like uh, in india also uh, i am not sure whether in kashmir and in uh, pondicherry like uh, union territories uh, i want to study uh, the tax rates and all because they are all uh, under the uh, union territory or in the uh, central government uh, uh, notation we cannot apply the same kind of the taxation to uh, throughout the uh, states okay there are certain uh, groups where you need to apply some kind of the slab system like kashmir and pondicherry and delhi Uh, these kind of union territories uh, goa might be having a separate uh, uh, mechanism for the taxation at least okay as an example if i am considering so in these kind of the cases okay if i want to study some based on some kind of the grouping kind of the aspects i can i can say uh, i can bank on this uh, stratified uh, sampling okay can someone give me the advantage of uh, this thing friends what is the advantage hope you got the stratified stratified is nothing but non overlapping groups on top of that we are going to uh, apply some kind of the sampling mechanism yeah here actually uh, we get a, a defined value actually the the, the uh, what do you say the result will be of an accurate sort of an accurate result too can i say minimization of the bias minimization of the bias because uh, as per the groups we are going there is no common rule for that uh, now you tell me friends whether accuracy in stratified is more or uh, in random is more stratified will be more accuracy is bit more slightly high hmm. uh, what is the other advantage ah uh, apart from that what is the disadvantage friends you can see here and you can tell uh, the ratio of uh, ratio. excellent excellent a ratio is not same na that means uh, the smaller groups uh can i say the smaller groups ah uh, a loss of precision because as the group is small we are picking accordingly definitely they may not fight for the uh, kind of the sampling okay so uh, this is one more uh, uh, drawback friends okay so and uh, any other thing compared with the random sampling any other difficulty we are having just to think through friend through the diagram you can say Take we need to stratify you know? <laughs> so we have to put some effort na there is some kind of the uh, effort or mechanism must be there mechanism must be there so as to process the groups so as to process the groups this is how you can uh, refer the orientation of uh, uh, stratified sampling okay so stratified sampling just involves uh, various groups kind of aspects and uh, based on those kind of the grouping uh, mechanism uh, you can observe okay uh, the, the process of getting the appropriate group because maybe the groups may vary but however i want to accommodate those particular groups also coming to the cluster sampling the third aspect friends what do you mean by cluster by the way it is also like a group only group only uh, but uh, it you will have a multiple groups more groups ah uh, okay 
more groups than you. Uh, yes. Clustering is it's a grouping only actually. Yeah. Again, uh, grouping only as that of the stratified. Have a look on this. Cluster sampling is usually in statistics when natural groups are presented in a population. Natural groups, like you know, uh, suppose I'm taking the exit poll information, and this particular polls, uh, male and as well as the female. Do I need to put any extra effort to separate them, friends? They are the natural groups, male and female. Age, age is a natural group or uh, engineered group? Yeah, this is a natural group. But whereas income range? That is engineered. Engineered feature because, you know, income ranges can be um, uh, below average, above average, average, greater, like that we're having some kind of the groups. So cluster sampling is used in the statistics when natural groups are present in the population. Maybe uh, in case of natural, uh, by default, those particular groups are having their own uh, kind of the setup. The whole population is subdivided into the clusters or groups and random samples are then collected from the each group. Okay, so uh, to understand better, I'm having one uh, diagram for you guys. So just have a look on this. Uh, Observe here, friends. See friends here, we are having four groups actually. Uh, but my interest is these four groups are related to all the PhD candidates, assume that. And uh, those PhD candidates are, are, are having the background of either big data or artificial intelligence or machine learning, those things. Amazon want to get the study. Now they, they, they are having some market research, like, you know, they want to study how the PhD female candidates are uh, earning in Bangalore or Pondicherry. So the, the interest is very clear here. We are making a natural cluster with the female candidates and uh, with the qualification of the PhD. And we want to study about uh, their uh, lifestyle and how they are uh, uh, publishing the papers or how they are uh, giving training to the other research scholars and whether they are interested to perform research or lead research, all these kind of things. So such kind of aspects you can refer in case of uh, uh, cluster sampling. Now the question is, when do we use uh, cluster sampling, friends? When data is- and we have natural groups. Non-classification. Okay. Non-classification type of data. This is having a, a non kind of, uh, so by, by default, if we are having the um, natural groups and we need not put any extra effort in that particular case. And in addition to that, so when do we use uh, uh, this uh, cluster sampling is it is typically used in the market research. It used when a researcher cannot get information about the population. What is the point friends actually? If he's not at all having any information about the population, maybe how many features or how many records I'm having, I'm, I have not no clue about, uh, uh, about the population as a whole, but they can get information about the clusters. You know, here already uh, some segregation would be there. And on top of that, I want to apply my machine learning algorithm. 
okay so these are all the important aspect we need to consider in case of the sampling techniques friends okay but uh, however you need not worry about uh, how we are going to get the samples and what is the process it's typically we are using all the machine learning kind of the algorithms but these things uh, why we need to get is uh, at the moment we are uh, in dilemma maybe in the implementation if you are getting a chance of uh, uh, observing a typical group and if you want to give importance to each and every group but uh, those groups are not natural then you can go with the stratified whereas in some other situation uh, maybe you know friends uh, you are having a natural grouping and you want to come up with some kind of uh, uh, understanding of the groups and you want to apply some kind of the research you can go ahead with the cluster sampling okay now can someone help me friends what is the key takeaway which are all the key takeaways of the sessions was a non normal uh, we started with the non normal yes. non normal distribution hmm. what is that uh, formula friends 1 minus 1 by k square 1 minus 1 by k square Chepshu's theorem. One minus one by k square. K square. Okay. So there we have studied uh, how to compute these kind of things. And uh, second important thing we uh, we have introduced uh, the aspects of the sampling. Okay. So in this particular sampling, we are having various aspects. Random uh, sampling. Random sampling. Majority of the times we are uh, making use of the random sampling. And what is the advantage of random sampling, friends? With the high sampling, point. with the high success rate, and with the sampling, you know, we can able to refer the entire population data. Uh, what is the second category? Stratified. Ah, uh, these are nothing but non-relative groups. Maybe I'm having some kind of the groups, and I want to pick up. Uh, the samples from the those kind of the groups I can go with the stratified. What is the third one, friend? Just now we have completed Still cluster sampling. sampling. Cluster sampling, you know, if you are not having any clue about the population, but you want to study uh, the behavior of the groups already there, and uh, that too, those particular groups are formed naturally, then you can bank on this uh, cluster sampling. Okay. Now, uh, just I am going to discuss in the next session, friends. Uh, uh, just we are nearing to the machine learning uh, journey. Uh, various uh, statistical tests. Because, you know, friends, this particular statistical state test is uh, important because at the moment you summarize the results, they will generally give Z score. F score, T test, and your correlation, ANOVA, analysis of variance, all these things. Okay. And most importantly, our uh, chi square, because this chi square we are going to use directly in decision trees. Okay. So, uh, so uh, I'll, I'll spend some time related to uh, these kind of the aspects. Okay. So, and once uh, maybe uh, our one and a half hour is going to dedicate for these uh, statistical test uh, and i'm going to talk about uh, um, some other aspects i want to cover uh, those things are nothing but uh, the consolidation actually so how to uh, fetch these kind of things because many at times we are uh, focusing uh, what is the data pre-processing and uh, what exactly the uh, other categories okay you know uh, the dimensional detection feature engineering and all so again uh, still i am going to pull some of the, some other aspects like uh, over uh, overfitting underfitting and as well as the uh, bias and variance trade off all these things again we are going to talk but most importantly our uh, focus is on the uh, statistical test because this particular thing is really helps us uh, to understand the uh, prediction levels and whether our model is really well or not okay that's all, guys. Uh, that's all from my side. Any doubts or any clarifications? Will uh, uh, ah. hello? Oh, yeah. Uh, one, uh, 
uh, when we talk about uh, marks of a students in a class, so that is a normal, uh, non-normal distribution, correct? Because if, if I'm getting my mean as 70, usually people will be like, uh, 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 like 70, 75 to 80, and then very few on the, the, the lower other side of the mean, correct? Correct. That's what uh, the people are following the CGPA, na? What is the CGPA? <laughs> Common grade point average, na? In universities, especially NITs, IITs, and central universities, you know, to make the things normal. Because, see, one, one person should not get 50 and one person should not get uh, 90. They will normalize the marks, friends. Okay, so uh, this is what how you can uh, see that. Even, exactly. even in uh, HR, HR in corporate sectors also, they use normal distribution. Mm. While, you... while in the end, when you are getting your uh, this appraisal. Stuff, appraisal. Yeah, appraisal, yeah. Definitely, Suresh. And one more thing, as we discussed earlier, that shoe sizes, how, pay, uh, how the manufacturing companies, they are not coming to us and they are not taking our uh, food size and all. But how, mm -hmm. they, how do they do? And even in case of the T-shirt sizes, all these things, okay? They follow the normal distribution, height of average people and uh, based on the measurements of these uh, shoulders and all, they could able to. For all those things, normal distribution is the best example. Because, you know, um, <laughs> a mean plus a three standard deviation will be getting all the 99% of the people. Mean plus or minus two standard deviation will be getting 95% of the people. Based on that distribution only, they can able to analyze. And still some outliers would be there now who are having 6.6 or 6.7 feet height. They may not get the proper shoe size or t-shirt sizes. That, that difficulty would be there, but, uh, and see, <laughs> again, see, I, we have, we discussed about 99.7 percentage, where the zero what point, about three? Ah, uh, what about point three? Yesterday, I was going to ask you this question, yeah. you know, but because what about, cannot, point three, what about yeah. below 68? Yeah, I cannot say, I cannot comment on that because I don't have the clarity about these 0 0.3 percentage, maybe four standard deviation, five standard deviation. I don't know even 10 standard deviation also. Because I can say if you are considering a normal distribution, that too with uh, uh, plus or minus one, two, three, we will be having all these kind of the conventions. Okay. So taking so, into consideration, ah, we are taking things as a granted that 99.7 percent is enough for us. Which will serve our purpose and model will be very good. Yeah, majority but, of the times. Uh, most of the times. Of sigma, like we think uh, the, the accuracy when we see the percentage, we think okay, it's correct. But but when it comes to the numbers, then even that is kind of. Point three percent is okay, yeah. I mean, <laughs> on, on, a, on a data set. Yeah, yeah. Data, actually, you you will have that clearance actually. No, exactly. it is like you you order for an iPhone and Amazon and you get some. Or something else that ah, no. <laughs> no. Hey, that is a that is a unique case. That's a peculiar ah, case. A peculiar case. Mm, okay. <laughs> That's it, guys. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And Thank uh, tomorrow just we'll have a discussion of the statistical test. Okay. Thank you. See you back. Bye.